good afternoon. On the piano, Frank Martin. He's still working on his back. <laughs> on the bass, Richard Giddens. <laughs> on the drums, Mark Ferber. <laughs> El Conguero Superior, El John Santos. Yeah. The Blues Master himself on the guitar, Mr. Jeff Massanari. You know what's true? They were playing, they were trading fours right then, or it was a drums trading four, something, you know. And I just went like this, like, hey, we need to end it. And he just makes up a little, an ending, and they just end it. You all know that. Right? I mean, what? <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, our wonderful Tai Chi master also happens to be a musician. <laughs> Melissa Magaluyo! Go, 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 which is kind of cool because you don't have to learn a bunch of chord changes and you can really dig into the rhythm of it. So I kind of want to show you the elements of uh, this style of music, which is definitely Afro-Cuban bass and the tune we're going to be working on with is called Tumba de Corqueta. Is that correct? And I don't speak Spanish, so you got to ask John, so don't go there. But anyway, um, basically there's going to be a line, and then a soloist, and then the line, and I'll be basically yelling letters at them. So it's, it's really cool because it's, you're jamming, and you'll see that uh, it's a lot of fun to do it, and you don't have to worry about changes. You can really dig into your, get into your rhythmic groove. I do want to uh, make you aware of uh, some of the elements of this style of music. So uh, if we started with the percussion, with John and Mark's going to play uh, something close to two, three mambo, and we're going to do like one, two, one, two, three, five. Yeah, 
Next, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, Mr. John, De excuse me, Dr. John DeVersa. Dr. John DeVersa, ladies and gentlemen. Assisted by Ms. Casey Newsom. I asked Mr. DeVersa one time, Dr. DeVersa, I said, you know, like, you got that bachelor's and you got a master's and you got a doctorate. So you, so you go to apply for a, you go to apply for a college job and he says, yeah, there's no problem because I have all the papers. I'm done with the papers. So when you think about your education in 2018, if you can't get these upper degrees you want to teach college, once you have the doctorate, then they can't mess with you, right, Mr. I mean, Dr. DeVersa? <laughs> I won't mess with you. John DeVersa, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. So here's, here's what's going to happen. Um, nobody up here knows what we're going to play, including myself. And it doesn't really matter. I don't think that a lot of us have never played together before, and this is kind of a precious moment because we have to establish trust with each other and establish a certain vocabulary that we think we all can share together and still express our unique voices through that vocabulary. Uh, so we have to create an environment right now where there's enough space for everyone to create their, their music and their moment. So we just have to serve the music. That's all we're going to do. I don't know what I'm going to play yet, but uh, people will come in when they think that they need to come in.
Isn't it incredible how the rhythm section could change from a descarga all the way to body and soul? I think that's a pretty phenomenal first yeah. rhythm section. Yeah. Is Anton Schwartz in the house? Yeah. He is Anton Schwartz! Yeah. And up with him will be John Hanamia. Yeah.
Thank you very much. Um, it's just so much fun being up here with these guys who are like reading stuff down like this, you know. Um, just respect. <laughs> I'm asking you to, uh, to say a couple words. Um, and I'm going to share with you an observation and then a little news. Um, the observation is this. It's about, um, it's about magic, uh, which is, I can speak personally and say that magic has a lot to do with why I fell in love and why I became a jazz musician. And why I fell in love with jazz is what I mean, although lots of magical things in the world. Um, and probably all of you, I know all of these guys are in love with you know, the magic that happens on stage and you know, what you were hearing a minute ago with John and Casey and, and the rhythm section. I mean, um, and yet in jazz, as aspiring jazz musicians, we kind of set our sights in a way at, at destroying that magic or at least magic, making it potentially less magical by yeah, every day we're in the shed listening to that transcription, playing, I mean to that recording of the solo, and playing it over and over and figuring out what the heck is it that Keith is doing there, or Wes Montgomery, or Joe Pass, or whoever it is. Um, you know, and trying to, like almost take the magic out of it, right? You know, figure out what's going on. Um, and yet, and yet if we do our job right, right, that magic just uh, not only continues to exist, but is actually what brings us uh, what, what gratifies us and keeps us going in this life. Uh, and I want to bring your attention to another piece of magic that happens in jazz um, that's a little less visible and a little less romantic, um, but essential to what we do as jazz musicians. And that's that, um, you know, we, uh, we get a new piece and we practice it and we practice it and we play it. And somehow, and you know, we bang our heads against the wall, it's tough, blah, blah, blah. And then we wake up the next morning, and somehow it's easier, and it flows better. It flows better than we ever played it yesterday, often. And that's magic, right? Um, and you know, we say to ourselves, like, okay, I practiced, I worked really hard at this, I taught myself this music. But, um, well, what do we really mean? I mean, it's like we played it, we did it, we, you know, it's almost like we prayed to the gods of practice, and then the next morning we woke up and somehow magically we can, we can uh, play better. And just as it's our, it's incumbent upon us as musicians to figure out every bit of that magic of what, you know, Wayne Shorter is playing, or Freddie Hubbard, or, or any of the greats who we aspire to, you know, we, it's our job to, to try to make that less magical. Anyway, I figured out what's going on. We can do the same thing with practice. And I just want to encourage you all to become uh, students of, of learning and of practice. And by that I don't mean like, you know, uh, learning which scale is the best to use and which, you know, which vocabulary like, because that stuff is totally important too. But what I mean is like, uh, what order should I practice these things in? And am I getting the most out of my time this way, you know, or should I be diversing and changing it up a little bit? And should I just go to sleep now, or could I, should I keep shedding into the night? Because uh, these things are things that we don't necessarily think about all that much. But you know what? There is a whole lot, a lot of psychological research these days about acquiring skills efficiently. And I would encourage you all to be open to the idea that if instead of practicing this all day today and this all day tomorrow and this all day the third day, you intersperse them and put some sleep in between, that you will learn things dramatically faster. And uh, a whole bunch of, you know, 10 or 20 or 30 things equally compelling. And just, you know, and it's all idiosyncratic to us, our personal selves. So, Become a student of learning of, of, of your own learning and how you learn. All right, I'm talking too much. Um, I am going to uh, give.
give, as I promised, I'll give some news, which is that I've been thinking about, you know, uh, some, some people just love to practice all day long. I love the music. I don't necessarily love the practicing. I force myself to do it. Okay? And so I want to make it as efficient as possible. And for years and years, 